Hi, it's Kyle, and I'm here to talk to you about Anchor. Anchor is a hosting platform where you can distribute your podcast on listening platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Best of all, Anchor is completely free. It's what we're actually using to create our podcast. If you're thinking about making your own podcast, download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started today. Now, back to the show. I said, what you got, the bald? I have a problem. It's like when I tried to think too much about coming up with a subject, there's nothing there. But it was just... Like a big empty dad, dad jokes. Yeah, it's just like a, a big empty open space right now. I'm just floating That's around. your brain? Or your head? Just yeah. a big empty space? Yeah, it's just like a big empty space. You just give me give me a quick second. I'm sure something will, will run into me. If you could imagine it, would it just be like, you know, core, maybe a third devoted to disc golf? Maybe like a third devoted to your kids and family? then like a third to just like everything else the rest of life <laughs> yeah just <laughs> whatever's left over what else yeah i mean it's packed in the there. disc golf is like literally about a third to maybe a half yeah I, of your brain yeah yeah there's a there's a lot of disc golf that comes in and out of it oh so i seen this rumor and i don't know how entirely you see it or hear it Seen it. I was, well, I mean, I read about it on Facebook and read it. Ooh, Facebook rumor. Yep. That. You know, those are the trashiest ones. Yeah. That at GBO or JBO this weekend, Gannon Burr got a warning for taking too long to putt. And so they were bringing up, like, you know, how come Nico's not get, at least getting a warning that he has to speed up. And I think. The competitors know that the longer Nico takes to putt, the worse of a putter he is. So it's like, we don't even need to give him the stroke. Just, you know, he'll keep missing these putts if he takes five minutes. Frick it. That's, that's my... It could happen with anyone, too. I, I It's never going to... When, it, when it's like the top, I don't know, 15 players, really, it's... You're not going to... No one's going to call them. Yeah. I don't think it doesn't. Uh, no one's calling Paul Macbeth. Doesn't he's taking minutes. Really bother me. It's not like a. It's not like it's a big big deal to me. It's so. Uh, I just like reading on about it on Facebook. I do want to know what it's, happened. It's ridiculous that somebody else has gotten a warning though. Yeah, that's. What, I want to know what happened that Gannon Burr was taking so long and and got called. The only thing I could think of is he's like specifically waiting for the wind to calm down, you know, whereas a lot of the times Nico's just... Was it a card just... mate who... It had to have been a card mate who called it, right? Yeah. Yep. So... Who called it? I don't know. I, like I said, I didn't barely read into it at all. I just thought it was hilarious. And then it came up with my... Uh, if I was Nico's card mate, I would let him take as long as he wants because the longer he takes the worse putter he is it's i i'll i'll do the research to back that up and i will come up with the numbers eric next episode it's scientifically proven right i do i'm telling you when i see him just step up to the putt and fire it in there i feel like he's a good putter and when he's sitting there taking those you know two minutes or whatever minute longs he never makes the putt he does sometimes, but yeah. Oh yeah, I mean, definitely sometimes. But I mean, that's me too. Somebody has. To I'm not a good putter. If you've run the numbers, yeah. If you've run the numbers, message us on Instagram, please. Oh, I'm running them. Don't worry. Tune in next week to find out the numbers. Oh, I gotta go back. I'm just gonna go back a year. I'm not gonna go back all the way through his career. Uh you're gonna go back through his entire disc life. I'm just gonna try to find a. Nico LaCastro, bad putting montage and good putting montage. There's, I know there's at least a bad putting montage out there, but I don't know if there's a good one. People are so fucking pessimistic. It also brought me to the uh, me doing math. If everybody took like the two minutes and 30 seconds, they're allowed. So two minutes to establish a lie and then 30 seconds once your lie is established to putt or throw your next shot. 
If everybody took that on a card, it would take six hours if everybody birdied each hole to play a round of disc golf. Like if you took your full full time, not counting the walking and the extra time to find a disc and extra time to determine whose whose turn is it and all that stuff. So I thought that was kind of funny and dumb fact that you may want to know. For real. <laughs> I don't know. I really just feel like it should be like as long as you're not impeding everyone else's play. Well, I think that's why it's it's, it's the card it's the card's ability to it's call decision. It. Yeah, it's not it's not they're not trying to make people I don't know. Yeah, it's it's just if it's making you play worse then you can, you know, say, "Hey, here's your warning about it and if he doesn't speed up then stroke him for it." But I don't know. It's just like foot faults watching it on camera. It's so much easier to see than when you're watching it in person because if when I'm playing with people in person, I just want to watch how the disc flies. I'm not looking at their feet. Right. Barely ever looking at their feet. Yeah. I'm always looking at the disc, see how they threw it, and see if I can learn something from them, or which foot faults I feel are much more important than timing, but even that. Foot fault. Yeah. <laughs> Second. Yep. So those are our uh, shit, shit hot takes on possible rumors that have happened. If you know anything about what happened again with Gannon Burr, I wonder if it was on a card. It had to have been on a, on a card that's on video. You would think if... If it made it on Facebook and Reddit, you'd think so. Have to that'll be, have that'll be my next next thing I find look for after after I run these Nico Locastro numbers. That's what we do here. We we talk about it and then we do things. Yeah, or you know, or we forget. Yeah, one or the other. That that too. And I'm okay with that. It's part of the mystery, part of the intrigue. Like, what will they do next week? Tune in. What will they say they'll do next week? <laughs> to find out if they're the same. Spoiler alert, they're not. I feel like sometimes they are. Just like just like Nico's putting. Sometimes we make good on our promises. Yeah, we're two minute putters. That's what you're saying. No, 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 no. I put really quickly. Take your time. Don't tell me what to do. Actualize, visualize, orgasm in your head, and then you can putt. No. Oh. That way, that way the cameras get my my vinegar. My, what is that? What is that called now? Vinegar strokes off of. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you haven't watched the league. Yep. To get that reference, I, I always forget. I Go forget about how much I used to watch that show. That show was fucking hilarious, and it ended so soon. <laughs> that's. I feel like that's ninety percent of TV shows. They always end really poorly. But. Yeah, that's true. It was hilarious, though. And I named my taco or my dog after I named my taco. What's his name? (laughs) Right. Dog Hog. I named my dog Taco because of one of the characters from that show. John LaJoy, or however you pronounce his name. Yeah, he's just so dumb in that show. It just perfectly matches Taco, my dog. He's just so funny. Oh, my God. Very funny, dude. Very stupid dog. Very stupid dog. He's probably a funny dog. He has his moments. He's been really... Dude, we just were gone for like a... I don't know, a couple of days. A day. And he missed the hell out of me. Yeah? Did he pee all over you to let you know? No. Oh. He's snuggling with me. Fake. It's fake love. If he doesn't pee on you, it's not real love. That's true. Well, he had peed earlier on himself, I think. Ah, so then he just it. tried to rub it on you. Yeah, that's how it works. <laughs> As long as there's pee contact, it's good. <laughs> this doesn't work for human to human love, just so you guys are aware. No, it only works for yes, dog to human Don't love. Don't listen to Eric. Pee contact only. <laughs> if that's what you're into, that's cool. No need to kink shame here, but you don't need to be peed on to be loved. Unless it's a dog. That sounds like you're kink shaming. I'm not. Still. I specifically though, said even, I'm not. <laughs> even with the specific reminder. Cal's just trying to make me look like a bad person. I was I had something with you there, but I lost it. It's too easy, or you're doing the job for me. Holy shit, are we 11 minutes in? Yeah, yep, we sure are. You want to do an ad read or something? Or did you not like doing the ad reads at the beginning? I, think you did I don't remember. I forgot. You did it I last week. It. I meant to do it, I think. I missed the opportunity. Soiled it. I mean, you can always cut it and put it at the beginning. I can just do it now. Yeah, you can. Whenever you're ready. Just leave all of us... 
preamble into, so it's excruciatingly long. <laughs> ad reads, ad reads, ad reads. Ad reads are so much fun. Fun. No, they fucking suck. So I'll try and read them really quickly so that it, no one gets bored. All right, speed run. Use code ONO10 for 10% off over at Disbaron.com. Use ONO20 for 20% off at FrictionGloves.com. Use code ONO for free shipping over at our Teespring store. If you have an Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube, hit us up. That was phenomenal. Not too bad, right? That was that was pretty good. There's just like one small Oof. little stutter in there, and it wasn't even that bad. Yeah. Like you just quickly moved over it and kept going. Thank you. I tried. It's a pat on the back there. I can't pat your back, so I'll just pat mine. That's, that's the same <laughs> thing, right? <laughs> uh, oh, that was that got me. Thank you. Eric. <laughs> oh, so this is off topic, like most things in here. But I was talking to <laughs> Nate about how you were at a wedding yesterday. I thought it was weird. It was on a Sunday. And Nate goes, well, at least it was good weather for it. I'm like, yeah, it's good weather here, but I don't know what it was in Colorado. And he's like, oh, <laughs> right. yeah, it might have been not been good weather. I'm like, oh, yeah, I don't know. So I thought that was pretty funny. Yeah, it's only 1,500 miles away. No big deal. <laughs> <laughs> I had the pleasure. It rained, by the way. <laughs> huh? It rained. <laughs> it, it rained. <laughs> I have to make sure I tell him that. <laughs> I, it hasn't rained in weeks. Yeah, just like, oh, here we go. <laughs> nice wedding. To oh, rain God. It was great. Great rain, not the wedding. Mm-hmm. I'm just kidding. It was okay. It was a good wedding. Yeah. I had the pleasure, or I, yeah, I had the pleasure of playing two new courses <laughs> this week. <laughs> you had the. I, I just like the decision whether it was a pleasure or not. It was. No, I, I, I it's, just, couldn't decide if I wanted to use a better word, but I don't have a big vocabulary. It was fair. No, it was awesome. It was it was a lot of fun. Okay, cool. So it was good. Yeah. It was, uh, I played one of my friends, Chris's courses. Has, Chris has a course on his property, uh, 11 Baskets. To play full 18 to like, you know, from different places. All of it's pretty open and it was really windy. So different than what I'm used to. Not getting to play in the woods. How did you play? I played pretty good. They're all, he set it up to be like a pretty easy scoring course. So other than that, I mean, I had a couple good drives, but I didn't play like amazingly. I finally have a jump putt though. Or die? Um, What did you say? You had a good putt? I finally have a jump putt. Like, I have a, a, a reliable jump putt. It's been something I've been working on. And Wow. Um, I've So, my problems used to be with jump putting was I'd either kind of, like, throw it in the dirt or, like, air them way past it. So, now I, like, strictly jump putt with my jawbreaker zone. And I just kind of play like long darts, if that makes sense. But I kind of throw it up in the air and let the let the disc kind of work. And as, as I jump, and they always are like just darting in right around the basket. So yeah, doesn't leave me with a long comebacker when I do miss. I like it. Yeah, uh, but I'm yeah, excited to see it. Chris has the eleven baskets, and then this summer he's planning on. He's got like some woods property too that doesn't have anything, so he's gonna put some baskets through there to he's hoping to do the full eighteen with eighteen baskets. But yeah, a lot of just like uh, it's a lot of those shots where you're like starting off kind of halfway, you know, in the woods. You gotta throw out through an open area and then you kinda like as you're coming to the basket, like the basket's just a little guarded. But yeah, that's a that's a lot of the holes. It's fun. Yeah, it's a but it was it was a lot of fun. And then I also on Monday, got to play the Brown City course. It is, I believe, two years old now. And whoever designed it, I think it did a really, really good job. So if you're listening, I give you two thumbs up. Um, it had a really good mixture of open and wooded holes. Uh, some, some, one, some holes even took like two perfect shots to give yourself a putt for the for like par which i thought was pretty nice you know not all of them were like that but there's like a few of them or they're like uh 
on that same hole, you can also go for like a risky shot and try to throw it over top of everything. But if not, then you're, you know, putting or throwing from jail. So I think he did a good, whoever did it did a really good job of just incorporating everything he could. And then there's holes that finish, you know, there's like a 600 foot hole and a 550 ish, like that's wide open. So it's nice to, nice to just get that variance because I don't get a whole lot of like wide open holes that I can just throw distance driver as hard as I can or far as I can. Right. So. Yeah. If you stick around Cass City, the best you get is like throwing around that hill kind of yeah. area it's really just eight and now i've gotten to the point where i have to either throw super flippy and let it like and just like turn it into the ground and hope it doesn't roll too much or i end up going like 30 feet long which you know whatever i'll take long i guess but it's still not like full full rips we play uh often we'll put if there's before any cars get there we'll play from like the grass hill on the other side of the parking lot to old one or yeah one just to get like full full throws in for sure oh the only way many people who don't live in michigan or in my area will know brown city course is that is the course they took james conrad to to film the video of his announcement to move to mvp so that's about the the only little glimpse you can get get from it because i didn't take any any video when i was there today or Monday. Good job, Eric. I know. I'm so good. <laughs> I think that's Same. it. That's it. Those are my cool courses I got to play. Super. It's always fun to play a new course. It is. New courses are the tits. Yeah. Oh, well, there's even like some water, but like it wasn't like it was there, but it wasn't like super like easy to throw your disc into, you know, like, you know, it could happen, but. Thoughtfully placed. And good thing, because it is some nasty, mucky-looking water. Well, it's Brown City. Yeah, right. Yeah. What did you expect? <laughs> Nate made the joke as we were leaving. Brown Town. <laughs> good thing they didn't call it Brown Town. I just imagine everything there <laughs> is the color of poop. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Close enough. Except for their mascot, which is the Green Devil. I don't know. How that works out, but brown and green are in collusion. Also, why would you want to be a devil um, as a mascot? I don't know. Doesn't make sense. Also, what's a green devil in comparison to a regular devil? Regular devil. I don't know. That's a who can what what fucking like crack meth house dream is that? Uh, you'll have to you'll have to ask them. <laughs> You're asking the wrong person. Brown City, what's up? Yeah, Brown City. We want you green devils. Answers. What happened to all the other devils? There's there's like the blue devils for there's for somebody. Uh, maybe that's just a thing, just a multicolored devil. Yeah. All right, we've talked about devils enough. All I right, think. just really quickly, it's a uh, Duke Duke Blue Devils. Just so great. Okay, moving on. <laughs> Did you want to talk about your? autism testing or were you good oh i wrote it in there i'm but sorry you're good it's there yeah uh sure i don't care i, I mean i just kind of wanted to throw it in here quickly yeah for it's sure. nothing big uh i got tested for autism just uh the le- language they use is like level one or another word for it is high functioning but that's kind of being phased out and then but yeah no it's autism like they say it's either like awareness or acceptance, depending on which person you're with. Which do you prefer? Acceptance. Because people are aware. Right. Like there's no need there's no more need for awareness. It's it's people know what it is. Yeah. So now it's just, you know, doing things about it for, you know, making people comfortable. So accepting it people is the idea. I feel good about it. It was pretty expected, and it's kind of good label to put on all of these things. So, you can now move forward with a better life. If you have questions about autism, hit us up or go on Reddit and look up autism. It's a good place to look for information. 
Don't go to Autism Speaks, anything but that. Uh, stay away from the puzzle piece shit. If you see that, run. And other than that, you're good. So anybody knows, if you hit us up for questions about autism, I'm just going to immediately send you to Kyle because I know very little about it. I'm learning stuff from Kyle, but it doesn't all sink in for me. So I will not be the one to give you any info because I will probably say it wrong. I'll just direct you to the right resources. I'm not going to, I'm not a doctor and I'm not a anything, just a autistic kid. So (laughs) I don't think we can call ourselves kids anymore. Damn it. (laughs) An autistic old man. (laughs) Thanks, Eric. I know, it's sad. It's sad. It's funny just because I think like, but I always just like still see myself as like a little punk. (laughs) I like assume other people see me as like a little punk. (laughs) All the time. I was never really like, I was never really little that, you know, I was not like huge, but I was always like a bigger kid anyway. So I always thought that was funny. I don't know. Thinks it's funny in my head. It's, it's something. Every time I look in the mirror, I'm like, oh yeah, that's me. You're a, you're a full blown adult, huh? I don't, I don't know. It's weird. (laughs) So, one of the things that I'm super excited for is yesterday, now, as you're listening to this, the um, Skins match at Eagles Crossing, it was with Simon, Calvin Heimberg, Brody Smith, and Scott Stokely. I believe all of their winnings are just going to whoever like wins the most, a uh, bunch of money is going to the charity of choice. But Eagles Crossing is the really nice course in Missouri that the founder of Gateway Discs created or designed. And then this older guy who owns the property just kept working on it and built like a... It's the closest thing I can think of to what I would call like a video game dream course, you know? It's just insane. Really excited to see how it's been. Last year, we've seen another Skins match with, I think, Eagle, Simon, Nate, Sexton, and one other guy. I don't remember who the last guy was. But we've seen a Skins match with them last year, and it was amazing then. So I can't wait to see, after a year of work, how much better it can be. They have a real disc golf driving range where it's uh, turf mats on crushed stone crushed stone just for people to go up there and throw the only thing that would be annoying is now i feel like you gotta have like you have to go collect your own discs right so then you have to like wait for everyone to throw and then people you know we're all out there together just i don't know how that's gonna work yeah so it's i mean it's cool um but i feel like someone's gonna get hurt with the disc my thought process was an advanced net system that would catch the disc and then somehow bring it back almost like a bowling kind of idea, you know, like a bowling ball retriever thing, Mm -hmm. how it like just rolls back to you. I mean, depending on how big you can make a net, you could do like a, uh, like, you know, like, well, I, I don't feel like you could make a net that big. But if you could make a net to cover the whole fairway, we'll say of the driving range. Yeah. And then top golf has that big of a net. Does it? They hit golf balls over. Some people hit golf balls over that net. So you take the top golf net, right? And you just take it and you put it on an angle. And then you just have people throw into the net. Oh, see, I wasn't. Yeah, okay. That. But I feel like stuff right? is still going to get stuck. Some things are, aren't. It's, it'll be like the us throwing on top of our tent, my tent at my wedding. <laughs> Some of them are still going to like get stuck up there, aren't they? Well, you have, you know. I don't know. They're just put it in. Not things, a slave, so. but you know, a <laughs> poorly sure. paid person to go get the maybe, discs. Yeah, maybe the guy who built it. You know, he's got something to do after he built the course, so he'll just go and uh, yeah, he'll just lock him up there. Yeah, just lock him up there. No, <laughs> he'll just go around with a stick. <laughs> what do you mean, lock him up there? <laughs> what? No. <laughs> no, Kyle. It's <laughs> not where I thought he was going with it at all. I think I agreed with it until I <laughs> hit, hit my head what it what he what he said. 
<laughs> so I don't yeah, know. not forever. You know, just for a little bit. Just for a little bit. Just <laughs> just like an eight hour day. No biggie. No shade. No lemonade. Maybe at the end of the day. Oh yeah, but not during it. No breaks. No. <laughs> no. Why would we? You have to say it with disgust. No. <laughs> Um, so Eagle was actually supposed to take part in the skins match at Eagle's Crossing, but on hole six of round three at Jonesboro this weekend, he dislocated his shoulder, so he is dropping out of the next few tournaments. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if he took off the rest of the year to make sure he's healed up. Yep. So... We'll see. He he says he has a plan in place, so I'm sure if you keep an eye out on his social medias, you know, he'll have his how he's feeling, how he's how he's healing. Hey, that rhymed. Sweet. Eagle, if you need a shoulder rub, I'm here for you, bud. <laughs> the other side of Crush Boys, well, I guess the other third of Crush Boys, I forgot. I always forget Kyle Klein is considered a, a Sky Team, so that officially makes him a Crush Boy. Simon shot a 13 down on the second day of Jonesboro, beating everybody by two strokes for round two. Jumped him up to fifth place or sixth place, I want to say, from way back. So I think he had, I think he went into round two with a negative one. So a negative 13 put him to negative 14. So that was pretty wild. It's insane. Yeah. So. I didn't catch any of the coverage, so if yep. you're like me, get ready to listen to Eric talk. Yep. FPO was really exciting when they were for everybody who was battling, not for first, because there's no chance for almost anybody else to to take it down. Uh tying at third was Ella Hansen and Cat Merch at twelve under. I got you got to see them on coverage both final day or round 2 and round 3 they played really well cats only I think 20 years old and pretty new to the tour and she has not finished out of top 10 in any of the events so far this year Ella Hansen just started last year and she's killing it already coming in at second was Missy Gannon at 14 under and then Taking home the win in absolute, what's the word? What's the word I'm looking for? Dominant. Yep, dominant fashion. Kristen Tatar at 24 under. She came out just absolute shooting fire and didn't give anybody else a chance. first. Let's let's protest uh, European players. Send them back home and... (laughs) They took our... Only have our... They dirk our jobs! Yeah, right? <laughs> Dark guy. Like, they're jerk. so much better than us at everything. <laughs> just the a, just a female. Like, can you just be nice? Just let us have one thing. <laughs> we do. They, nope. We are number one for, I think, fat content in most of our foods. So that's something. <laughs> USA. <laughs> USA. <laughs> MPO was just before as, we get deported. <laughs> MPO was just as exciting as FPO, but for different reasons. It was pretty knotted up at the top, um, leading all the way up to first. We had Kevin Jones coming in third at twenty five under. We had Paul Macbeth and Calvin Heimberg. Tying for first after the 18th hole on the final day at 26 under with Calvin taking home the win in the playoff. All it it took was hole one. If you do watch the footage of Paul McBeth teeing off of hole one for the playoff, he steps on a part of the tee pad that a lot of people have complained about over the week. And I can't say that it did everything, but I'm sure it didn't help because he played that hole really well all weekend and then just early released on all Heiser to just push it way off into the 
not way off into the rough, but into the rough to where he had nothing but a like forehand run at it. So, but at the same side, you know, if if you know that's a bad part part of the T pad, it's that front like I think it's like eight inches or something of the T pad um, will buckle, is what people were saying, or like you know, like fall almost fall out from underneath your feet. Did you hear about this during the tournament too? Uh, they talked about it at the practice round. If you watch uh, the Joe Mess Pro practice round, um, right when they're getting ready to tee off hole one, I think it's Paul and Germ are like trying to find like the spot in the tee pad that they're trying to avoid. But there's a slow motion video of him teeing off. I just seen on Instagram like minutes before we recorded where you can see like everything move under his feet really bad. So hopefully... Why would they know about it? During the practice round, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, a, I'm pretty sure Not everybody fixing. knew about it. I, I should probably Odd. go back and watch some more whole one tee offs and see if it affects anybody else. All right, like you could have put a little like safety cone there. Yeah, don't step here. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Well, I mean, they're not allowed to move anything in their run up anymore, so frick it. Also, some highlights. It was nice to see we had Alden Harris at the top after rounds one and two. So it was nice to see him up there, Uh, you know, kind of a young gun coming out. He played well at a couple tournaments towards the end of the year last year, and then he's been kind of mostly quiet all season. So it's nice to just see him, you know, get his name out there. I think he's Prodigy, pretty sure. Right. And then it was nice to see... Chris Dickerson talk about how even though he's been traveling and doing disc golf for a couple years now, uh, Discraft just helped him take that to the next level. Like they just made him, he he worded it, I think it sounded to me like he was talking about, it just allowed him to focus more on just his game and not have to worry about as much other stuff outside of playing disc golf. So I think that's why he's just playing really well this year. So... He Look's doing really well. To see Chris Dickerson on more cards, because he's definitely not done. It was also kind of funny to see, not funny, it was uh, interesting to see, because I always think of Calvin as such a emotionless guy, but he you could tell he was trying to like fight back tears after winning Jonesboro. He just hasn't had a really big win in a while, and so... You know, I think the, think the last one would have been what Ledgestone, where him and Ricky cons- were cons- called tied. Was that Ledgestone? Yep. Yeah. So, and it wasn't even like a win. Yeah. You know? Uh huh. It counts as a win, but it's not at the same time. Yeah. So, really excited for Calvin. We are big Calvin fans on this show. That's that's pretty much it about JBO. We have Dynamic Disc Open in Emporia, Kansas, coming up starting tomorrow, Thursday, April twenty eighth. Last year, Paul Macbeth won by six strokes, and Haley King won FPO side by six strokes also. So look for some pretty high scores to get you towards the top and ready for a Heiser Fest. Heiser. And more wind. Probably more wind than we've seen at JBO. So. Probably. It's always windy there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And maybe we'll even catch a glimpse of the Wicked Witch of the West. I think that's it. Three, two, one. Top five. 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 Oh, yeah. So we decided for our top five this episode, we're going to do our top five favorite Always Sunny side characters that would be good at disc golf. We probably just picked our favorite side characters, to be honest. But... We'll try to make them yep. good at disc golf in some way, shape, or form. You guys get it. <laughs> but the, It's Always Sunny podcast has been one of my new favorite things to listen to. If you've been listening to that alongside this podcast, totally makes sense. It's a good, just chill conversation show, but they, they're going over each episode. So maybe if we shout them out, they'll shout us out. Maybe. I doubt it. Go back and listen to us ranking the gang, though. I think that one we did pretty good on. A lot of arguing. That's Whatever. What we do. <laughs> Whatever episode that is. Oh, I just had it up too. So I started off number five with Pondy, or otherwise known as Bill Ponderosa, 
He was a football star or jock in uh, high school, so he's athletic. And then he failed in sports, so what do you do after that? You find a sport that you can play good at, and I think that was disc golf. He also does a plethora of drugs, so... But he shares them. Yes, he does share them. So, good guy. He also has a uh, sort of a dark sense of humor, which... Most disc golfers do, so it's natural. It just comes natural for people with dark senses of of humor, I think. Yep. If you ever wanted to watch a guy try and kill himself, (laughs) Pondy. That's that's your show. Keep an eye out for him. Eh, he'll be fine. Number four, we went with Artemis. That is her real name in real life. Found that out. And she is a bleached asshole. (laughs) We haven't figured out how that makes her good at disc golf, but it is a fact about her, so. It was going to come up eventually. Yep. That's it. Oh, okay. (laughs) I mean, unless you have more. Uh, I I don't really think she needs more than that. She's a bleach asshole. The only thing I can think of is it sounds like her and Frank get into some pretty athletic sex positions that I think would take some, you know, Limber, limber limbs. So, I think she, while she may not appear athletic, I think she she is truly athletic. And the way she incorporated a bun <laughs> into the lovemaking one time, <laughs> put she puts uh, what, blue cheese crumbles in her hair or something. Yeah, like, felt like a cob salad. <laughs> For number three, we picked Ben Smith, or otherwise known as Ben the Soldier. I just found out his nit- his last name was Smith, so I've been wanting to dart that in really quick. Um, one, he's a soldier, so he had to go through some sort of form of training. So he's got. I thought be you said some- porn for a minute. I was like, whoa, <laughs> some porn of training. Some, maybe, maybe that too. And he's got some pretty sick. Jean shorts that I think he could really, uh, you know, derive his power from there. From those jean shorts. The shorts have power. Yeah, the shorts give him the power. Just listen and to he's this. not in a wheelchair. And yeah, as he's he's not in a wheelchair as we originally thought when he first came on the show. So, not that you can't disc golf in a wheelchair. Just just putting that out there. Although some courses, I'm sure, are not super wheelchair accessible. But but anyway. Before I say something terrible, <laughs> our number two is Cricket, also known as Rickety Cricket. Also known as Street Rat. Rickety, crickety, crickety. Yeah, straight Street Rat. We picked Cricket because of how good he is when he's being hunted. He turns into a trapeze artist, a gymnast. He turns into a gymnast. Free runner. Yeah, free runner too. So he, uh, he he's, he's athletic. For number one. Or did you have any honorable mentions? Luther? Yeah, Max Dad. Max Dad. Do you think he picked up disc golf in prison? The cannibal get stuff gives him strength. Oh, okay. In the same way as the jorts, yeah. so. It's like those old, uh, old Indian, Native American, sorry. What are they called? Legends? that when Indigenous you, like, people, Eric. The heart Native of our, Americans, offensive. Heart of a... Part of their kill, then you get absorbed their life. Hashtag force. cancel Eric. No, if Eric, hashtag cancel Eric. Please, please do. I'm just kidding. I'm not. <laughs> cancel him. For number one, I pit. We picked Bruce Mathis. It is Dennis and Dee's real dad, and he's kind of like that uh, love everybody hippie hippie type. And I feel like. Those are always disc golfers, you know. Like until, until he pushes D and Frank to like almost bang. Yeah, but they were lying Don't to you him. Remember that part? Yeah, weren't they lying to him the whole time? Yeah. So, I mean, it's still weird. He was just trying to get them to admit that they were lying. Yeah, or they wouldn't. You know, he's just from the generation where we they just loved everybody, so he didn't care. He could. He's totally cool with watching. <laughs> he's just a watcher. Yep. Which is okay. Again, we're not kink shamers here. Yep. Nope. 
And that is our top five Always Sunny side characters who would be best at disc golf. Mostly just our favorite side characters, except for Bruce Mathis. He's, he's here neither here Didn't like there. him. Hmm? I didn't like his character. Yeah, I, now after I got to him, I was like, eh, I could have put Uncle Jack in there. Whatever happened to Uncle Jack? I thought he was number one. No, I didn't want him to put Uncle Jack as number one. Yeah, but he has the hands. Big hands. Very large hands. Can you just put your hands over mine? Just put your hands over mine, please. And I'm pretty sure he was a Boy Scout. And he might have raped... Well, no, he definitely raped Charlie. He got in there. Maybe molested. Definitely not. I wouldn't say raped. It was rape. (laughs) Did you fuck my fucking mom, Santa? Well... Allegedly. Before we uh, go down any more horrible... Always sunny jokes that we could make. We'll let you guys enjoy the always sunny the way it's meant to be watched and not us butchering them. Hope you guys enjoy whatever you're up to for this week, whether it's watching DDO or just you know, hopefully enjoying life. Hopefully you guys get out there and throw some frisbees in the air. Hopefully you guys have wonderful weather because we have wonderful weather here. And I'm so happy for it. Finally, right? It's it's so nice. Although, I wouldn't mind if we went through like the phase where it was like 50s. Instead, it just like jumped from 40s to like almost 80 real quick. So, yeah. Which uh, I, you know, I'm not gonna complain too much, but right, I do but enjoy it'll... like the spring and fall weather when springtime. Yeah, yeah. When it's not too it'll figure too hot, not too cold. So, thank you for listening, everyone. We'll see you guys next week. Catch you on the flip side.